know it. Uh, <laughs> you can just go to the beach in your, you know, neighborhood because it's been so warm. Over 220 million people with highs above average. It's really bad in the plains. It's dry and it's warm. Um, and that's going to continue for at least the start of this week. And then finally we see a pattern change. But until then, it's warm. Big ridge in our jet stream. That's not been changing at all. No, we've had this for, what, two yeah. weeks at yes, the least? At least. At yes. least. So this is going to continue. But we do see troughs starting to develop. We actually start to see a change in the weather. I would say this weekend, even going towards next week, yeah. we start to see some changes in the overall pattern. And so until then, though, we're going to keep it warm. And then we'll talk about the changes coming throughout the rest of the show. Temperatures running either at average or above average throughout most of you know the plains, the southeast, Florida. The thing is, we've just been close to average. Mm -hmm. So you know, when you look at the map, we don't get the big red dots. Over but here. like you said, we don't have to escape it because yeah. we're talking about the same temperatures as you look towards the plains, and oh, it's even hotter. I mean, it's like why go to Florida? I can just stay where I am here. Keep the pools open in Oklahoma City. It's going to be 81 Jeez. degrees. That's where you're going to see the biggest departures from average in the rest of the southeast, South Carolina, South Georgia, down into Florida. It will be much closer to average. Temperatures in Daytona Beach actually um, are going to be below average. We, we only hit 68 degrees yesterday, our first sub-70 high this fall. And the last time this happened was 238 days ago. So Back it's been in a while. March. So it's yeah. been a bit here. But we are going to see those temperatures here a touch below average. I mean, our average is 76. So, I mean, come on, when it comes to this, the big below average temperature is coming as we head into the weekend. So this is a big change. Yeah, we'll that's, more, that's a we'll significant change. For especially for Floridians, if it's yeah. below 70, that's when Forget we... A jacket. Freaking. Yeah. You don't wear flip flops. You You're have, from like, the Caribbean, closer. you know. Yeah, we know. At least we're going to get some rain there. We, what we really need is something from the tropics just to pop right over the south and right. we'd all How be happy. How do you erase the drought? You need yeah. something in the tropics. You need something in the tropics. We're not going to get that. No. Um, but we do have something to watch. Um, and, you know, looking ahead to people making Thanksgiving travel plans, people go away for Thanksgiving, right? The whole so you week, might yeah. Be, yeah, they go for the whole week. You might be going to uh, Costa Rica. That's a you know, popular destination. This is really close. So yeah. we're watching this Jamaica, area for potential development. You know, Jamaica, yes, Jamaica I mean, as right this thing, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. might drift there. If not, still bringing some cloud cover mm -hmm. uh, to that area. So it does have a good chance of developing into something. Yes. Um, but in the next five days. In the next five Short days. Short term, no. Next five days. Maybe. Yeah. Yes. So where's the positioning going to be even as we head into the weekend? Mm -hmm. That's still a little bit hard to tell uh, from what we have right now. The models have been saying that there's something going to develop. We've been watching clusters of thunderstorms right here yeah. actually for the past couple of days. The problem is they haven't organized into something organized yet. There's no center no. of low pressure. I mean, all the shear is to the north here. Yeah. You can see we have kind of that west wind there. It's kind of coming around, east or wind, east yeah. wind, I should say, there. And then kind of the west wind here. So it's trying to get its thing going here. And you need thunderstorms that to happen, and we have plenty of those. And so without the shear, actually, the environment is fairly good. Um, yeah. And the fronts that come in, they're not going to come as far no. south, so we don't have to worry about this. Um, that is actually pretty far south, though, for something to yeah. develop. We take a look at, you know, where we're going to watch. It's this same area. Nothing's changing. This big cluster of storms isn't moving. So we'll keep an eye on this all the way getting into the end of the weekend. And it's really about the Friday, Thursday, Friday time frame of this week where we might see something develop. Right. And then Sunday really kind of make its move mm -hmm. perhaps uh, to the east. But we don't think it's going to be strong regardless yeah. of if it does develop. The shear stays to the north, so it's in a good environment for development. And the steering winds actually stay to the north yeah. as well. So it may actually not go very far Meander. at all. Here's where the GFS has a hanging on late week right here. Again, Western Caribbean. They're very similar in their um, The Euro proximity. all along has had the isobars much more compact mm -hmm. and uh, much stronger. more, a little stronger. So we can have an auto, I believe is the next name, right? Uh, the, I've yeah. totally like, <laughs> I've moved on from the tropics, hasn't everybody? It's like we're still <laughs> well, talking about the tropics. Well, we are, and the season actually runs through the end of November, even though we sort of wrap things up in October. But these are the places where tropical systems have originated yeah. in November, so it happens. No, and this and is this a hotbed for spot. it. Yeah. You know? Prime yeah. spot for Kelly, some warmer water temperatures mm -hmm. there, perhaps. Yeah, and you're right. They're on delay in the mid-Atlantic from the mountains to the tidal basin. There's a noticeable difference in the tree colors this year. Peak time for the fall colors in Washington, D.C. It's supposed to be right now, but there's still a lot of green around the nation's capital. So joining us to talk about this delayed color is Angela. Capital Weather Gang. Angela, thanks so much for joining us. You know, You're welcome. Especially when you compare last year to this year, it's a really dramatic change. Right. So actually, this year is two weeks and the lack of moisture. I, you know, a lot of people like to attribute uh, the warmth. We had a near record warm September, our warmest October in. Uh, you know, I went out this past weekend with my dad. He was in town, and we were driving, and the colors were amazing. What I think is different about this year and what's so great is that some of the more rural areas, uh, maybe even to higher elevation a little bit, you know, those temperatures a touch cooler. Um, are the trees also struggling out there? 
Yes, so uh, similar delays up in Shenandoah. Asking this question about what's happening out there, is it surprising? Absolutely, yeah. People were, uh, you know, people plan their fall activities around peak color, and so the delay actually, it can delay vacations. Uh, serious photographers go out on, you know, serious photography vacations to do fall colors, and so the delay probably uh, messed up their schedule a little bit this year. I bet, yeah. Angela Fritz, thank you so much from the Washington Post and Capital Weather Gang. I noticed it too in the south, actually. It seems like our color's really hanging on. Yeah. And in the Northeast, too, I'll say, yeah. Kelly, you know, it seems like it's a little bit later as well. I feel like it's like a sugar crash, right? You and your kids just eat all their Halloween candy at once, and all of a sudden, they just are on the floor, and they are done. Uh, look at our weather in Denver. So we're going up. We're going up. We're enjoying the warm temperatures are hitting records. Wednesday, 78 degrees will be a record. And then Thursday, we drop off nearly 40 degrees. And then it stays cooler than average, something we haven't seen a lot of. Right, Denver? Minneapolis will do the same thing. We're eating all our Halloween candy. We're enjoying the warmth. Temperatures go up to near 60 and then we crash. You know why? We've got a front that comes through. It's a big old faux pas that we will feel. Oh, thank you guys. All the way from the mountains to the northern plains, temperatures crash. Rapid City, 60s to 30s. We're also going to feel it in Bismarck, nearly 60 to 30. So this big faux pas that we got going on, that just brings a temperature change. It brings and some it snow. also brings some snow finally to us in our winter weather update. We do actually have a couple feet, which is so desperately needed here in the West. Yeah, we you know, ski resorts were supposed to open last Friday in Colorado. It didn't happen because there was no snow. So we'll see what happens when we get no. some snow. I mean, it's we'll see if it's enough. At least it's cold enough for snow. That means that it's cold yes. enough for them to, to make, make snow, snow, which is key. So here's a look at that trough dipping down. And what that means is cold air can go as far south as that does. But it also means that we're getting a little energy come from Canada dipping down. We'll see that dive in. That will help develop a low pressure just on the lee side of the Rockies. So this could help throw back some moisture, maybe even bring a few flakes to Denver. We'll see. Uh, uh, you know, still have to get the right position in that low for you to see that happen. But more importantly, as the low tracks up into the northern plains and upper Midwest, we get snowfall there. Yeah, it's going to be a hashtag throwback Thursday with this low pressure uh, coming on in towards the end of the week. And then as we head into our Friday, there's that cold air that gets pulled in behind this low pressure. And so that's going to mix with the moisture. And I think we are going to see a pretty good snowfall for some of us. Throwback to last year because we haven't seen winter storm warnings up in places like North no. Dakota since last year. I mean, about this time, actually, you went the whole winter with, without a ton of snow. So and I think go. one of the reasons that we'll see those winter storm warnings is this low pressure is pretty low. So our isobars look like this. That means we have very strong winds. And so the wind is also going to be an issue. It's not just snow and cold yeah. temperatures. I think our wind chills are going to be pretty brutal for some of us. Even without a lot of accumulation, there could be blizzard warnings mm -hmm. out just because the visibility will come Ground down blizzards. snow falling. We'll see that in Thursday, Thursday night, and Friday. So Minneapolis, although we start as rain, you could change over to snow. And so you may actually get your first snow before you get your first 32 degrees, just because of the timing of everything. I, I mean, that would just be whacked yeah. like you know with the temperatures falling it's gonna happen I think more like simultaneously it be, yes, you know yeah. type of a thing yeah. going on here so we could see a pretty significant there throughout the Arrow Hub Arrowhead I do think mm -hmm. Minneapolis will get in on some of the snow uh, especially as we head into that Friday night but quite a change look at Friday into Saturday I mean look at set look at Friday night Minneapolis in the 20s so not only do we get freezing but we go into the 20s I know so we we're get basically dropping 25 degrees practically because we're yeah. almost at 50 you know down to 26 here so it'll be significant and we have not dropped below 42 this late the previous latest freeze November 7th that was in all the way 1900, 1900. yeah so this is significant Minneapolis you've had a very very mild start to the season um, we're going to change that in a hurry coming up at the end of this week will this be named a lot of folks want to know uh, we name question. our storms so that we only name impact storms 2 million people or 400,000 square kilometers of area has to see a winter storm warning before we'll name it right and so. they're expected to we're expecting to see some advisories here but will they be warnings and will Will it be a wide enough area? That's right. the question. This, it's really, you know, four, four or five out of ten kind of chance. Argus is the first name on the list, and that's the name it would get if it gets a name. Kelly.